The man who experienced grace responds with resentment. He responds with resentment. You would think he would be glad to forgive this person after he had been given so much, and plus, that person didn't have to owe him nothing. You see, people sense their need for mercy, but they're not ready to see the need to extend mercy. I want y'all to get that off that screen. I don't care if you got to take a picture or whatever, because I deal with it in my office all the time, that we are quick to receive mercy. But now that we've got it, we don't want to extend it to people who have hurt and damaged us and who owe us. Now, see, this is what church is really about. This is serious stuff that affects everybody in here and everybody watching. All of us share these things in common. One, we have all sinned. And, 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 and number two, we have all done wrong. God forgave us our wrongs. And now the question becomes, do we forgive it when we're wrong? Oh, this is the time to leave. You don't want to hear no more because it's going to get worse. Because you cannot be a healthy person filled with resentment and unforgiveness. Many times people ask me, how do I deal with my role here as the senior pastor? I have great damage done to me by some people. Great damage. And I have damaged people. As I have told y'all before, don't make the black pastor a little God. We're not gods. We're human beings who make bad decisions sometimes. But see, I am a mature Christian. So when people have wronged me and done me serious hurt, I get to my knees and get rid of that stuff because that stuff is toxic. It's toxic to me. It's toxic to my family. I know how to get rid of it. But immature believers will see me in such a light, they can't let it go. See, you have got to learn, the Bible says in Matthew 5 and 7, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be given mercy. You have got to learn that we who have received so much from Christ, that we have an obligation to repay that to other people. You see, a forgiven debtor should seek out those indebted to them and forgive them. Remember what Jesus said at the end of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Now note, for if you forgive other people they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you don't forgive others their sins your father will not forgive your sins so here's what I want you to do those you have your phones take them out those you have calculators pull it out most of you have your calculators on your phone but I have a real one right here Go find your calculator app. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to type in as many numbers as you can that, the, that it will hold. This calculator, 368, probably nine numbers. That's a lot, isn't it? Imagine that these were the sins we've committed against God. What number what you write in there. And you can't start from no 19 and 20. You're going to start when you two or three and lie about you ate the, didn't eat the cake and you got chocolate all on your mouth. How many sins is that? And yet, some way, somehow, when we plead it with Jesus, Cover it with your blood. And somebody said, his blood covers from the guttermost to the uttermost. When you asked him, he hit the clear button. 
ilk Allah sana bir tanrı. All those sins go. Well, where did they go? Into the sea of forgetfulness. Not to be remembered anymore. So God cancels our debt. He puts the clear button. To cancel the debt means to clear it. What you used to owe, you don't owe no more. You and I are not citizens heading to hell because God put the clear button on us so that we would go to heaven. I got some praises in here somewhere. You are Christ-like when you forgive. Did you hear me? You are Christ-like when you forgive. So pull out your calculator again. Pull it out again. I'm going to work you today. This time, type in two or three numbers representing, make them little numbers. Don't go nine, nine, nine. Two representing two or three people who have hurt you, who have wronged you, who keep you up at night in hurt and pain, that you know you need to let go. Every message can't be a shouting message. It, some messages need to be a convicting message. Get that person in your mind. Remember how you put in all those large numbers and you hit the clear button and all those sins, God forgave you. Now you got two or three people up in here. Hit the clear button if you can forgive. Don't hit that clear button if you ain't going to forgive. Because you in church. See, sometimes we just follow, I hit the clear button. God know you didn't mean it when you hit the clear button. Now, if you know you can forgive them, you hit the clear button. And then, now, there's been restoration because the sins are forgiven and there's possibility of restoration of relationship. Doesn't mean all the time. I had to teach a separate class. Just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean automatically all the relationships are restored. No, that's, that's a goal. But when we forgive them, we are now healthy. We are now whole. We are now can move forward. And we don't have that person and that mess on.